Today's 40k green text is read to you by a free man or not. If you'd like to see more of the shit that I do, go to my channel in the link in the description below. Let us begin. <laughs> Be me. Wake up like any other day. Check phone. Oh hey, that thing Monster obsessed over actually happened. Well, I guess I ate my words. Check news. Sure enough, everything is fucked. Literally and figuratively. Works probably cancelled for the next few weeks or whatever. Boss probably got nabbed by a nig hound or whatever. Heh. <laughs> Look out window. Bird things flying all over the place. See neighbor get dragged off by his own cat. Watch a lizard chick challenge the local gym rat to a fist fight. Chuckle a bit, then she gets her shit rocked. Suddenly, it clicks. No work. Nothing to do. Starts chuckling. Chuckling becomes hearty laughter. Hearty laughter gets harder. Spring to my basement. Lock the door behind me. Turn on the lights to reveal my absolutely massive backlog of models that need to be painted. Quickly began my work. Wife who can wait. Papa Dawn needs to be painted now. Be me, Anon. Been in my basement painting my imperial fists for the last couple of weeks. I'm glad I have shower in here, otherwise I'd start to smell. I'm good for food and water, but I'm running out of Newland oil. I have a bunch of axe cracks, but it's just not the same. Dark times ahead. I still have well over 123 yellow boys left to paint. I know what I signed up for. Papa Dawn would have been disappointed if I gave up now. I occasionally allow myself to check the news on my phone. Everything is still as over tea kettle. Surprise the power is still on actually. My boss called and asked how I was doing. When I sent him a pic of my unpainted hordes he replied knowingly. He and his snake waifu wished me luck. They didn't hang up right and I could hear them going at it. Fucking EW. I bet if my basement had any windows or ventilation to outside I could smell the sex juice. I sometimes entertain the thought of leaving and surrendering my wizardhood. But that shit can wait. If I left now, I'd never finish my backlog. I know I probably never play another game of Horus Heresy again, both because of the happening and because it's a dead game. But that's not the point. I bought all this shit, and I'm going to see this through. Post soon, fellow stalker. Be me, Anon. I've been down here a month and a half now. It's not so bad, actually. I still have metric fuckloads of dudes to paint. I keep finding ones that I don't remember getting. The backlog grows ever still. Sometimes when I post my image boards I get asked about what I'm doing with my waifu. When I tell them about my activities for the past month I either get called a liar or shit poster. True sons of dawn do not lie. When I post pics with some stamps I get greeted with all hail of Anon Y and holy shit. Shit cannot be holy, father. I explain my massive backlog and that I must finish it. Then I'm asked how I find time between that and my waifu. This is the part all this goes south. As it turns out, I am one of the last few single males, at least in my area. Some call me out and say I'm a paladin fag. Others request to know my location, like I would dox myself. These individuals severely outnumber the former. Slash whip has gone downhill since the happening. So many shit models, specifically sororitas, painted as having no armor, and not even well painted either. So many failed kit bashes to give them cat ears or horns. Absolutely disgraceful. I calmly display that I do intend to go out, but I must make good on my oaths. Lord Dawn would not expect any less. Then ask how I exactly managed to stay like this for so long. Admit that I had a doomsday prep phase and fortified the shit out of my basement. Air filters, water filters, sliding steel door, it is basically a bomb shelter. Also not technically legal, but as a true son of dawn, I care not. My old boss calls me once more. He asks how I'm doing, to which I show him my painted legion. Asks me if I've done anything besides paint since he called last. Lol no. He is at the same time shocked, worried and impressed with my autism. He asks me if I've met anyone since the happening. Explain to him that I've basically lived in my basement since it started. He tells me what I'm doing can't be good for my health. Tell him I fully intend to exit when I'm done with my business. We say out goodbyes, 
and I remind him to hang up right this time. I don't want to hear that shit again. I could almost hear him choke on whatever he was eating. I ran out of Newlin oil. I sit helplessly at my desk, staring at a contempt of dreadnought, bereft of shade. Steal my resolve. I might have more on my other painting desk, but that requires me to leave my sanctuary. I could become tempted to leave and have my models go unpainted, but Dawn's Legion never gives up. Tomorrow, I retrieve the Newland oil or die trying. Die figuratively, at least. Be me, Brother Captain Anon. I was wrong. I was completely out of Newland oil. My expedition to the main floor of my fortress was for naught. However, the expedition was not as exciting as I had thought. All was quiet and normal, no demons in sight. Only a bit disappointed. But one must always remain vigilant. I have only one option now. One that will test my will. I must venture to the outside. By the blood of Rogel Dawn, I will not falter in my quest. The first step into the outside was uneventful, as there were several that followed. Downright boring, really. All I see is the occasional couple, usually sexing each other. The degenerates. They pay me no mind. Unsurprisingly, the shop is closed. However, the door is unlocked. Within lay my prize. I enter and claim several pots of liquid gold, but the temptation of grabbing more models is almost too great to overcome. But no true son of dawn gives in to temptation. I place the exact amount of money needed to cover the fee, for no true son of dawn steals, no matter how overpriced an item may be. Several times something tried to stay out of my sight, but nothing can escape my watchful eyes. It is getting more and more sloppy with each movement. Greetings, sir. Do you have a moment to talk about our lord and saviour, Eros? I definitively did not let out a scream unbefitting a son of dawn. I quickly regain my composure and turn to see what looks to be an angel with pink wings. Alright. From deep within, I channel all the charisma of Rogel Dawn himself. No. I turn away and leave her stunned. But, but everyone deserves to be loved. Yes. But also, no. She sputters and tries to convince me all the way back to my fortress. Patience is a virtue all Sons of Dawn must have. I enter my house and close the door behind me. Already she is pounding at my door. I believe she is the one I used to reject. Mister, please wait. I must save your immortal soul. Please accept arrows into your heart so you may find love. She is persistent. It is a virtue, far from redeeming, but a virtue nonetheless. All the love I need is the love I have for painting. Until I'm done, at least. Be me, Brother Captain Anon of the Imperial Fists, proud son of Rogue God- Mr. Please, your very soul is on the line. Don't you want to be happy? She refuses to leave. Her presence vexes me. <coughs> as does her incessant pounding on my door. Thankfully, I can find reprieve in housework. The barricades want to keep themselves. Yet, suddenly, the pounding ceases. The silence is unnerving. Mister, I know you truly want love, but something inside you is preventing it from bearing itself to the light of Eros. You need help. I require no help. The flapping of large wings echoes down from on high. She brought back up. Oh joy. Maybe if I ignore them long enough, they... The window next to me shatters, and a pink arrow lodges itself into the wall next to me. Immediately dive underneath the kitchen table and flipping to make cover. Several more arrows lodge themselves into the thick oak. Damn it, Layla, you missed! So did you, Delilah. We all did. Spread out. Try to find a vantage point. The fools. Sieging the fortress of an imperial fist is never that easy. I just wanted to paint. Is that too much to ask? No matter. They started this war of attrition and they are fools if they think they can win. It has been an hour. The angels are stubborn in their intent to enlighten me, as they said. Quietly, I consume an apple to regain my strength. No true son of dawn would pass up delicious sugary fruits. I have been given little opportunity to move beyond my makeshift cover. 
but it helps that they seem adamant on speaking loud enough to hear them. Amateurs. My chance to move comes when the angel guard in the window overlooking my cover moves. Quickly, I roll out. Almost immediately, arrows spout from the walls. I must take it into the sanctum. Nothing else matters. Mr. Please, stop moving so much. We only want to- ah! The apple core collides directly with her forehead. An excellent shot. Air gross! It's in my hair! With a final roll, I enter the basement. The pain of falling down the stairs is nothing compared to the euphoria of victory. Several more pink arrows carry themselves in the stairwell, skewing the poster of Perturabo I used as a dartboard. My fist slams down onto the closing mechanism and the sliding door slams shut. Victory is mine. For the moment. Ah, oh, man. The got away. But why is he so stubborn? We only want to help. Apple gook in my hair. Be me. Brother Captain of the Imperial Fist, proud son of our Primarch progenitor Rogel Dawn. The Angel's presence continues to vex me. I click on the outside microphone. All you must do is open your ear to Eros, then... I click off the outside microphone. The preaching is what makes them unbearable. Thankfully, the door is thick enough to where I can barely hear them. But this is only prompt them to speak louder. Flashing on the monitors alerts me to one of them, the leader, I believe, attempting to gain my attention. I might as well humor her. Speak. She smiles, thinking she has achieved some small victory. Kind sir, won't you please allow us in? All we wish to do is help you find your one true love. All deserve the oneness and peace that comes when a one couple with a paired soul won't you please let us know? The brief look of indignation almost makes me laugh. Almost. But, kind sir, all- I click off the microphone and power down the monitor. Now, venerable brother Thornus need to be shaded. Some hours passed. The angel's up to something. One of them, the leader, has disappeared some time ago. The other two, the stubbornates, have stood guard silently. Neither of them has said a word. I've checked and rechecked several times that the video feed live was not tampered with. It is time for questioning. You, the one I threw the apple at. She flinches heavily. Where has your leader gone? She does not respond. Very well disciplined. Another hour passes before the leader returns, fully kitted with pink SWAT gear. This can't be good. Good sir. This is your last chance. Please come out willingly. I would rather not wish to do what comes next. Then lift something from a carry bag. My silence speaks volumes. Very well. The light of arrows reaches all, even in those in the darkest of depths. She places the object onto the door. Breach! 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 Be me, brother Captain Anon of the Imperial Fists, proud son of Primarch Rogel Dawn. Watch with wild amusement as the cupids ogled the door to my sanctum. The breaching charge was less than useless, not even dented. The fortifications of a true son of dawn cannot be undone by such pathetic means. Through the microphones on the cameras I hear a phone ringing. My phone. I realized that I had inevitably left it behind in my escape. The angels take notice. One of the angels notices and answers the phone. Two words and she goes in completely pale. Hester, what is wrong? Who is that? The angel is dead silent. She quickly and quietly marches to the door to my sanctum. Uh, Anon, your sister. A voice is faintly heard from the phone, and she yelps. Your father is on the phone, and he wants to speak with you immediately. The bolted tone betrays her fear. I know this is no lie. The other two angels look on in confusion. But a glance from the leader makes them stand down. Cautiously, I move to the door. Do not try anything. She says nothing. Fear is shining in her eyes. Father has that effect. I slide the door open just enough to let the phone be slid through. The angel tried nothing. A look of relief washing over her face. I put the phone to my ear and answer. Father? My son. My senses in your house detected an explosion. 
And the woman who answered my call is not familiar to me. Situation report. I make a brief summary of the events that led to this situation. Father said nothing during this explanation. I admire your conviction, son. I've taught you well. I allow myself to feel pride. Thank you, Father. Well, that does not explain the explosion. Ah, yes. The angel tried to force open the door to my sanctum with a breaching charge. Did not work, as expected. Father grunts in agreement. Very well. Keep your oath, son. That is an order. Yes, sir. I say goodbye and hang up. I look back at the angels. Each of them wear expressions of pure terror as they clean my house of the mess they made. The angels line up in front of the main camera above the door. I would like to formally apologize to you, sir. Grace of Erebus be with you. I watch as they all but sprint to the door. I wonder what Father said to them. Be me, Brother Captain Anon of the Imperial Fists, proud son of Primarch Rogel Dawn. A month has passed since the angel siege ended. None came to bother me again. I've managed to put a significant dent in the backlog of models, but I still have a way to go yet. Were I a weaker man, I might have lamented the choice to buy five betrayal at Calcets. But regret is for the weak, and no son of Dawn is weak, especially not battle brother Voral. He's a tactical line brother, currently saving away for his 100 years of service. All of my warriors are named. All have stories to tell. All are unique in some way. Come call me mad for adding this much detail into one single model, let alone all of them. But I care not. No great work can be left undone. The glorious sound of gothic chants emanates from my phone. Father calls. Father, what is it you require? He does not respond immediately. This is strange. I... I require your presence at my home. Please come immediately. I will inform you of further events upon arrival. Stranger still. Father, what is wrong? Are you ill? Under siege? No. Very well. I'm on my way. Snow had fallen during my exile. Everything is covered in half a foot of blanket of snow. The streets were not even plowed. Truly, these are dark times. How the power still functions is a mystery, but no son of Dawn can be stopped from reaching his objective. Within minutes, a plow is fixed firmly to the front of my truck. As I finish locking down my house, the icy spear shatters upon the area above my head. Instincts kick in and I immediately drive into the cover of a barricade cleverly disguised as a brush. Shit. Why can I not carry out my objectives in peace? Be me, Brother Captain Anon of the Imperial Fists. Proud son of Primarch Rogel Dawn. Once more I am beset by beings that seek to corrupt. Give up, human. You're being obstinate. The Ice Witch had kept me pinned here for better part of an hour. Why she had yet to storm my barricade is a mystery to me. More icy spears shatters against the hard concrete block I use as cover. A mere ten feet away is my truck, but a sprint would be suicide. At times like these, one must think tactically. Enough. I wish to speak to you. Silence. Alright. Come out then. Do I have your word you will cease hostilities? She's silent once more. I agree upon my honor. I slowly rise from my cover and stare into the eyes of the Ice Witch. She floats inches above the ground with her arms crossed. Slowly she approaches and monitors me to speak. My name is Anon. I do not have time for this farce. My father has called for me to depart for his home immediately and with all haste. You back my way and prevent me from doing a son's duty. <laughs> my dear boy, you speak of duty. What about your duty as a man to take a wife? Already I can tell this is going nowhere. My father demanded my presence, and his son must obey. What would you have me do then? She hides a smile behind her hand. She slowly moved the hand into the sagging sleeve of her dress. I can see a glint of metal. So be it. My dear boy, I don't expect you to do anything. Leave that too. 
Just as a hand flickers out, I reveal my trump card, a technique passed down through the generations of my family, one my father taught me the moment I made my first pillow fortress, pocket sap. The sand splashes into her face. Almost immediately, she drops the smug attitude. She begins to slash wildly with a silvery knife, but I've made it to my truck. I slam the doors and lock them, while the woman clears her eyes. Who does that? What the hell? I start the car as she finishes cleaning the rest of the sand from her eyes. Am I a joke to you? She continues to rub one eye as a tear streams down her face. No, no enemy is a joke. She narrows her one eye upon me. Enemy? Are you stupid or something? I'm trying to help you! No, you are not. Before I go, I would like to correct you. You are not a joke. Jokes are funny. You are sad, pathetic, even in your current state. The pale-skinned woman tries to reveal several times to respond with wit, but fails miserably, returning to incoherent growls. As I put out the driveway, a woman begins to throw her icy spears at the tires of my truck. She misses mostly, but sheer volume of fire as she hits the left rear. I do not panic. My special order tires can drive 30 miles until it becomes flat, but father's house is 80 miles away. I'll have to walk once the tire gives. No matter. A true son of dawn would never give up. Such is my duty. Be me, brother Captain Anon of the Imperial Fists. Proud son of Primarch Rogel Dawn. Be slowly pushing through hordes of zombies. The snow plow at the front of my truck assists greatly. Not street legal is what my police officer comrade said when he saw it, but he plays Eldar. The zombies weakly frail at the reinforced steel and double-layered plexiglass. Nothing short of a shaped charge would breach this moving fortress. Watch as a hooded woman in pallid skin floats towards my side of the truck, tome in hand. She stops chant inches away from the door. Cease! No motion, not a request. No. Her eyes narrow marginally. One of her hands drifts towards the door handle, not even trying to hide the motion. Locked. Her lips thin. She floats in front of my truck. Tome in hand, she begins to recite foul magics. A circle of purple runes appear before her. Fool. Greatly press hand onto the horn. Her concentration is lost immediately. The circle of runes fizzle out. Pedal meets metal and I push through what remained of the horde. Limbs spray, bodies fly to the sides, a head severed from a lower half impacts my windshield. HUSBAND! No. Flicks on wipers, head remains, licking the glass. EW. Give her a spray of wiper fluid. Now lubricated, the head is tossed to the side. Watch in rear view mirror as they quite literally pull themselves together. The undead which sat on the ground, eyes wide. Some of the zombies, obviously smarter than the most, comfort her. The rest wave farewell as I speed off. Be me, brother Captain Annan of the Imperial Fists, son of Primarch Rogel Dawn. Truck wheel has finally given out halfway to father's house. Pull out onto the shoulder of the road. Thick woodlands to either side, foreboding to be sure. Unbuckle myself and climb out into the back seat. Retrieve a backpack, a gun case, and a regular case. Exit truck with items and place them on the tailgate of my truck. Open regular case first. Pull out specifically ordered ballistic vest along with thin guards, knee guards, full face helmet, and other necessary armor. Naturally, all yellow. A weird imperial fist with pride. Next, I strap on the backpack. All the necessities. Water, MRE, the Imperial Infantryman's Uplifting Primer, limited edition. Last but not least, the gun case. Press thumb onto fingerprint reader. The case's seal opens with a hiss of displaced air. Open the case and gaze upon my pride of joy. My weapon. Sega 12, fully automatic, shortened barrel and removed stock for compactness. Angled foregrip, custom iron signs, and custom yellow paint job. A weapon fit only for a true warrior of the Emperor. Take up the weapon and inspect it. 
all functions as it should. Retrieve six magazines of rubber slugs and beanbag loads. No blood shall be spilled today. Take my GPS and enter the coordinates to father's house. Grimage as I review my options. I could continue on the road, extra time would be spent getting to the destination, however it would be safer. Or I could cut through the woods, cutting down the time spent walking nearly in half by exposing myself to whatever manner of monster lurks within the woods. Father had said to make all due haste. Woods it is. Load a magazine of rubber slugs and chamber a shell. The Emperor protects. Be me. Brother Captain Anon of the Imperial Fist, proud son of Primarch Rogel Dorn, be marching through the thick underbrush at an acceptable pace. Much noise is made, but if anyone is around to hear it, let them come. Come to a small clearing in the woods and allow myself to take a knee and rest. Take a generous sip from my faithful canteen. Danger sends tingling. However, I continue to act casual. It was an eventuality for this to happen, an expected outcome. I'm being hunted. Rise to my feet once more and proceed at a low jog. An hour passes, nothing of note. However, it has become clear that I am being followed. The dead silence of the forest and the occasional rustling of bushes is dead giveaway. I reach another clearing, larger than the last one to be sure. The half foot of snow covering the clearing is dotted with animal tracks, not to myself, a defendable position. No place for my stalker to ambush, plant feet into the snow, and wait. For as long as the sun of dawn stands, they shall go no further. Time passes, and eventually the stalker relents. From the dark of the woods, firelight appeared. A woman appears. Brown skin and scale in her form, along with a tail of fire running down its spine, weighs back and forth casually as she walks. The snow at her feet melts as she waggles onto the clearing, long blade in hand. She rests the blade on her shoulder, shin held high as a ring of melted snow steadily grows around her. I keep my firearm lowered, but ready for anything. Hail, Sir Knight. Tis nice of thou to find such an appropriate place to speak. My grimace behind the mask of the helmet. My silence groans on her. Oh, no words. I see. Well, my intentions are simple. I challenge thee to a duel. Let us cross blades and decide which one of us is to be the better. My eyes narrow and my grip tightens. If I refuse. A coy laugh springs from the throat of the woman. Twas not a request, Sir Knight. Ready thyself, of course. The woman brings the blade of her sword to bear, and I raise my rifle. This is your first and only warning. Cease and desist. Leave me or risk harm. The woman laughs, the fire of her tail flaring. So sure of thine self? Quaint, have it thee. The woman charges, blade raised. The rubber slug flies out of the barrel, slow enough just to early follow. The woman brings a flat of her sword up to block the rubber missile. Clank, thump. The rubber slug slams into the blade. The opposite side slams into her face, halting her in her charge briefly. Feet firmly planted, I fire off three more shots before she closes the distance. She weaves out of the way of the first and deflects the second, but the third hits home and a gut with the sound of a heavy slap. The woman falls to a knee ten meters away, gasping for breath. She lets out a quiet groan of pain. <sighs> Twas a lucky blow, a solid hit nonetheless. She rises back to her feet, a glint in her eyes. She points the long blade towards me, a wickled smile grazing her lips. It will take more than that, however. Now, draw thine blade so we may... The woman twists her body to avoid the incoming projectiles. However, she was unnaturally swift. The first slug clips her shoulder, but the second lands solidly. The blade clatters to the ground and her hand swiftly clutches her right breast. Her thrill scream echoes throughout the winter woods. 
fuck! She rolls hands and still clutching her injury. What the fuck? You shot my tit! Why? I do not answer. You were supposed to draw your sword to a duel me, not fucking shoot my tit! You asshole! She glares from her prone position. I do not have a sword. Yet. The woman slowly regains her composure and rises to her feet once more. Her offhand tightens around the handle of her sword. All right, asshole. I'm going to go over there and... Her eyes widen, but it's far too late. With a meaty thwack, the rubber slug hits home and the other breast. Once more, the blade falls to the ground with the owner. He hit the other? Why? Why do you hit the other? I did not intend to. I did not intend to. Horse shit! The woman, a loss for words, lays on the ground and clutches at her aching breasts. Fucking asshole! I turn away and jog onwards. Someone get the meaty twack me and put a pick of dawn over Jamie's face. And someone did. Thank you for listening. If you'd like to hear more of what I do, go over to my channel. The link is in the description. Have a nice day. And blessed be thee by the Emperor. Thank you.